Hi, I'm Matt Leacock, and I'm here to give you an overview of Daybreak. Daybreak is a cooperative game about stopping climate change. It presents an optimistic vision of the near future where you and your friends get to build the mind-blowing technologies and political movements that we need to decarbonize the world. You all win the game if you're able to stop global temperatures from rising before they go out of control, or too many communities are put into crisis. The game takes place over this shared board, and each player has their own player board. The players represent up to four world powers, the United States, China, Europe, and the majority world. The player boards track different things, the amount of electricity each player generates, the amount of carbon they emit, their resilience, and the number of communities they have in crisis. One of the main challenges you'll need to deal with is the amount of carbon emissions each player generates each round. If you look at a player board, you can see all these gray tokens. Each one of these will produce one carbon cube each round. That carbon will be thrown into the recent emissions area of the board here. These emissions will then get absorbed by the land and sea of the planet. To represent this, you can match up the tokens and cubes like this. The carbon tokens and cubes left in the atmosphere are excess emissions. The excess emissions are added to the thermometer like this. Whenever you fill a row, swap out the tokens for a temperature band. This represents a rise in global temperatures. As you can see, as the excess emissions accumulate, the temperature rises. Next you'll see what effects this increased temperature has on the planet. You'll roll one die for each temperature band and increase the corresponding planetary effects track. These represent planetary tipping points and might increase the temperature further, cause more emissions, or have other negative effects. Then you'll see what effects the increased temperature has on your communities. You'll resolve this number of crisis cards, and as you can see, this number also goes up as the temperature rises. These cards have a number of effects, but the most common effect is to endanger communities. You determine how many communities to endanger based on the temperature and how much resilience you have. Here's an example card. In this case, you'll need to endanger one community for each temperature band on the thermometer. So for example, if there are five temperature bands, you need to put five communities into crisis on your player board. That's bad because if any single player has 12 or more communities in crisis, everyone loses the game. But you could protect yourself with resilience, these little shields. In this example, you can reduce the number of communities you'd put in crisis by one for each social resilience shield you have. This looks pretty dire. What can you, the players, do about it? You'll want to focus on two different goals. First, reducing the amount of carbon you generate, all those gray tokens. Next, increasing your resilience to protect your communities. Let's walk through the order of play to see how this is done. Each round begins with a conference step, where everyone comes together to make plans. The first thing you'll do in this step is draw and place the crisis cards that may affect you for that round. One of these will be forecast, and two will be unknown. You can talk about these as a group, and discuss what to do about them. Then you'll draw two global project cards. As a group, you'll select one of them to play. For example, this one lets you increase the number of cards you draw each round, and this one gives you extra protection against certain crises. These cards have powerful effects that will affect everyone at the table, but players must work together to activate them. Then you'll each draw five opportunity cards to add to your hand. After the conference step, you'll do the action step, where you can all work on your own individual player boards. This is the heart of the game. During this step, you'll make use of your opportunity cards. These cards can be used in three different ways. First, you can do any action printed on the cards in your play area, here above your player board. Each card shows a different action, and many of these cards have costs. How do you pay these costs? Well, there's no money in the game. Instead, you'll spend cards from your hand. For example, this action lets you spend one card from your hand to add one resilience token of any kind to your player board. While this action lets you spend one card to remove one dirty energy plant from your player board. That'll help you reduce the amount of emissions you produce each round. However, you'll want to make sure you produce enough electricity to meet your electricity demand represented by this blue peg. As you pull these dirty plants off your board, you'll need a way to generate more electricity. You can do that by using this action. For every card you spend, you can add one clean electricity plant. The second thing you can do with these cards is play them from your hand in order to start a new project. To do this, you need to add the card to your play area. You can't just discard the card to use it. When you do this, you'll have to cover up an existing card. Cover up the action 
it will no longer be available, but keep the tags visible. The tags can often be used by the action in front. For example, for this card, I can now add one infrastructure resilience token for each infrastructure tag I have in this card stack. Since I now have two of these tags in this stack, it's more efficient. I can keep going though. I could put this micro factories card on top to take advantage of all these infrastructure tags and then put city greening on top of that in order to generate four more infrastructural resilience, one for each of the four tags that are now in the stack of cards. Chaining cards is a powerful and exciting way to build momentum. You can start new projects on the foundation of your older projects. Finally, you can tuck a card from your hand behind another card to make use of its tags. For example, I can tuck this card with a grid tag behind this card. So now I'll make two clean energy plants, one per tag whenever I do this action. Players may do as many actions as they like in any order they like, and you don't need to wait your turn. Everyone can do actions in any order, although it makes sense to make plans with the other players before you jump into action. When everyone is done with the action step, you do the emission step. In the emission step, you first check to see if you meet your electricity demand. For every electricity plant that you're short, you'll need to endanger one community. Then you'll add up all the gray tokens on your player board and put one carbon into the recent emissions area for each one. Look at all that carbon. Next, you'll sequester the carbon below. And finally, shift the excess emissions to the thermometer. Then it's time for the crisis step, where you roll for planetary effects and resolve the crisis cards that I explained before. Finally, you do the growth step. Here, every player increases their electricity demand. The US and Europe increase it by one, China increases it by two, and the majority world increases it by three. You then advance the round marker, and you're ready to do it all again. The game ends, and the players win if you're able to achieve drawdown and survive that round. Drawdown occurs if the players produce less carbon than can be absorbed by the Earth's natural systems. This means you've collectively reversed global warming, and so you can start taking carbon off the thermometer. This is a wonderful moment if you can achieve it. You all lose the game if any player has 12 communities in crisis, the temperature ever goes above two degrees Celsius, or you take longer than six rounds. It won't be easy, but it is possible to win, and Daybreak lets you explore all the ways that we can stop the climate crisis together.